Recently, I watched a documentary interviewing people with learning disabilities. The documentary portrayed their lives to be full of abuse and harassment from their community. It was an extremely negative look on their lives. I work as a support worker in Leeds. From my experience, that is one side to the story, but there's also a very positive side. My name is Peter and this is where I live. I have worked as Peter's support worker for the past four years. Over the last four months, I have been filming his life to open the eyes of those that show discrimination. His determination and drive to live an ordinary life has inspired me to make this documentary. Would you describe yourself as having a disability? Oh yeah. What do you think makes you disabled? My hand. Your hand? My hand and my leg, because I can't put it on. Peter has a learning disability and a physical disability and also challenging behaviour um, that is worked upon with staff. And do you think that you have a learning disability? What do you mean? Have you ever heard that word before? I haven't, no. No. So you just think your disability is just your hand and your leg? Yeah. Peter has a learning disability which doctors describe as a deficiency in intellectual and emotional capacity. It means he has a lower than average IQ. He finds it difficult dealing with day-to-day -day situations. Pete was also born with a birth defect affecting his right hand and foot. This affects his mobility. Peter's lived in uh, his home within Leeds Federated for the past 16 years. Do you know how many years you've lived here? 23rd of January 95. So you've lived here quite a lot of years? Yeah. Yeah? I lived, I lived in Meanwood Park 11, yeah. Yeah. In Delft Manor 19. So what was Delft Manor? It was an hostel. Uh, how big was it? Quite big. Is there more people living there than there is here? Oh, yeah. Yeah, OK. So when, I, when I first lived there, there were 24. 24 people? Yeah. So why did you move out of there? I'd been there long enough. Yeah, you... and that's the one that's more well, I said, yeah. In the 1950s, medical knowledge of disabilities wasn't well developed. Support networks were not available and people with learning disabilities were treated as patients in psychiatric hospitals. Being born with a disability, Peter has lived in hospitals and hostels all his life. So when you used to share, like, rooms with other people, would you not be able... Uh, did you have your own personal belongings? You know, like in your room upstairs, you've got your DVDs, you've got your books, you've got yeah. your music. When you yeah. were at Mainwood Park Hospital, did you have any of those things? No. 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 So, when you moved to Delft Lane, did you get those? Were you able to have your own room? Yeah. So you could buy your own things then? Yeah. The positive side for Peter is that um, he does an awful lot for himself. Through staff support, he's learnt to do cooking, cleaning. He manages his own finances and takes care of his own medication, and makes his own appointments and goes unsupported. What tablets do you take, Peter? Phenobarbital, oxybutin, and uh, phenobarb. Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Right, then, so. it starts, then it starts back from there on Monday. So what do you do with Tuesday, your tablets? Tuesday, Wednesday. Put them in the little box there, like I've done these. Peter has epilepsy, deep vein thrombosis and bladder spasms, which are controlled by medication. Peter's very active. He, he attends lots of centres and works for MIND as a volunteer, which he's done for the past six years. He'll sit behind the till and greet the customers. He does sacks, um, rings the dates, times on the sacks. Yeah, he keeps himself occupied. Women's and all them, all of other, all of men, all of other men. Oh, okay. Do you ever and, buy uh, any stuff from here? Not quite a lot of stuff, yeah. I got that dog from here, that dog that barks. The dog that barks. Okay. He barks. 
Yeah. It's a, it's a door, but you put on the door, you put on the door. I've been there nine years now, yeah. That's a long time, isn't it? Oh, yeah. So have you made friends there? Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've seen managers come and go there. Have you? Oh, yeah. Peter's social activities at night, he, he goes out six nights a week um, to different clubs and likes to be out in the community. Peter may not have the same mentality as you or I, but he still feels the need of social acceptance. One day a week, he attends a social evening. How long have you been to Papa? Well, well, now, OK. How long is that? Oh, well, well. Years? Years, yeah. Call it that, yeah. For two years? Two or three years, actually. Okay. So what do you like about Fab? I don't know, I don't know, I just like it. What do you do when you're here? Play bingo, have a rapper, have a drink in a mad bar, and just have a bit of a laugh. Peter attends church every Sunday. Peter doesn't grasp the concept of religion. It's more that the church offer him a role within the community. When did you meet Peter? Probably about 15 years ago. He's very well liked and he's one of our best, uh, most regular attenders and he comes to all the social events. So how often do you see Denise? I don't only want to go away with her. So where do you where do you go? Down to Wales. What for? Holiday. Oh, right. and how often do you go to Wales? Every every year. Once a year or twice. Once a year? once a year. So you see Denise once a year. Yeah. How did you two meet? We I went to a centre in Osmondthorpe. Osmondthorpe Lane. And um, I had another boyfriend at first. But um, Peter came to the centre after a few years and uh, we started talking to me and Peter because his mum brought his washing. Then once he went somewhere, did Peter, and I sat down and talked to his mum and she told me all about him. And I went, goodbye, Warwick. And I've never left Peter since. Yeah. Peter, have you ever been down to a farm where Denise was? Twice, love. Twice. Twice. Oh, yes, right. If we don't see each other, we miss each other very much. Well, I do, I know that. Many a time. Peter and Denise's engagement may not be your average relationship. Despite the both of them having learning disabilities, this doesn't mean they can't share a loving bond like any other couple. I usually don't get excited now as I used to, but I've been very excited. Do you plan on getting married? No. No, stop it as we are. We're so happy to be together. Peter has a lot of behaviour problems when he's not able to talk about his feelings, so staff do sit and discuss this with Peter, and over time, this has managed really well. Did you go to um, Osmondthorpe Day Centre then? Yeah. Ah, right, from when you moved out of Mainwood Park Hospital? Yeah. To Tells Manor, then you went to the Day Centre? Yeah. And you know when you moved here? Yeah. Did, did you ever, have you ever encountered any problems? With anybody no. who lives around here? No. Has anybody ever called you names? No. Did they call you names when you lived at Delft Manor? Sometimes, yeah. Did they? Was it the kids around there? Yeah. That would call you names? Yeah. And how did that f make you feel? Upset. Yeah. You know what I mean. While filming the documentary, a vacant flat was advertised in the area. I discussed this with Peter as a possible move-on option for him. This would give Peter total independence and his own flat, which is what he had been aiming for over the years. I wasn't sure how Peter would react to the reality of moving. It actually shocked me how positive he was and how eager he wanted to move. This is a really positive move for Peter. After years of living in hospitals, hostels and supported living, he is finally ready to live by himself. Oh, it's nice. You liked it? Yeah, I love it. So would you like to move in here then? Yeah, yeah, please. <laughs>